Hello and welcome to the twelfth video in this beginner series programming a tile puzzle game on the iPad. So in this video we want to start the steps towards letting the user drag the tiles around the tile board. And to do that the first thing we need to, do, to know is which tile the user has touched when they put their finger down on the screen. So we need some way of detecting from, from the point that the user has touched at that location which tile it is. And we need then to know which square in terms of board occupants that tile is on because we need then to look around that square in all directions and see if the number 24 in the board occupants which is the empty square is there so that they can actually slide the tile somewhere. One way of doing this would be to take the point that the tile is that the user has pressed and do a fairly complicated calculation to try and work out including the tile borders exactly which tile was pressed by the user. But there's actually a much easier way to do it. If you look here we have the board printed out here in the console from a previous running of the program and we've got the numbers 0 to 24 where 24 represents the empty square. Well what would be really convenient is if we also could number our tiles themselves in this way and Cocos 2D provides a method that calls called CG rect contains point and all you have to do then is say for a given point is it inside a rectangle? For example, we could say, is it inside the rectangle of a sprite? Now we know that we have our sprite board and we have our point, so we could say, is the point inside the rectangle of a sprite? And the answer is yes. But the only problem then is, we don't know where the sprite is on the board without doing lots of calculations. So what we could do to solve this is actually number the sprites in exactly the same way that we've numbered the tile numbers on the board occupation. And that way, say that tile number 23 was sitting on the index 8 here, if, tile to, if we said yes, the, the touch location is on tile number 23, we could use the board occupants to get the location of this tile back, which is the index 8. And then we can just look at 7, 9, 4, 2, 11, 12 and 13 to find, and 3 to find out whether there's an empty square nearby. Now the obvious thing that then comes to mind here is that our sprite board, if we look in gameplay layer.h, is made of a type is, is a type CC sprite, of a class CC sprite, and that doesn't have any numbering properties. But what we can do quite easily is simply subclass this CC sprite class and add that property to it. So if we right click onto our tutorial and hit new file and make sure it's CC node class and CC sprite and I'm going to call this game tile and hit create and now we have our header you'll see here a game tile which inherits from CC Sprite. So now all we need to do is add in our property which will add in an integer and we'll call this a tile number and it's non-atomic because it's an integer and then the only other thing we need to do, as always, is inside gametile.m in the implementation for this class is we need then to synthesize this property. We don't, because it's non-atomic, need to worry about the uh, allocate, deallocating or anything like that. Okay, so that's the first step done. The next step we need to do is to go into gameplayerlayer.h and actually import the gametile.h and here change the type from CC Sprite to our game tile type. And now we'll go into gameplay layer and we need also here where we create allocate the, uh, the create the sprite board sorry or each sprite and add it to the sprite board array we need to change the type there to game tile as well. Because we're subclassing or inheriting from a CC sprite class we keep all of the methods and things available in the CC sprite class so we simply need to replace the name here and everything works as before. So now what we need to do is actually set our tile number as I've explained at the start of the video. So we just need to do sprite board i dot and then tile number equals i. And that's all we need to do now to have our tiles set up on the board. Save those files. The last thing then in this video that we'll do is we'll actually do some detection for which tile has been pressed. And to do that we need to add in a function. I'm going to call this function returning an integer which is the square number and I'm going to call it get square from point and this will take in a CG point 
and I'll call this point. And now what we need to do is we need to, well first of all we'll print the board at the start of the function for a bit of debugging. And then what we need to do is we need to loop through every one of the sprites on our sprite board. So we'll make a loop here and we know we've got 24 sprites so we'll loop from 0 to 23 and now we can use this function that we are supplied by Cocos2D to see if the point that was touched which is the point argument into this function intersects the bounding box of the sprite at this location. So we simply say if the rectangle of the sprite at this index square its bounding box contains this point then we know that that sprite has been touched but all we need to do then is when that if we know that a sprite has been touched is we need then to loop through the board occupants and find out where that tile number is so we loop through from 0 to 25 and we simply say then if the board occupants equals the tile number then we know that we found which square our tile is on and we'll print that then to the board and we'll return that index. If we don't find anything we'll return minus one which we'll use later for knowing whether we've actually hit a tile and we're on the board or not. And that's all we actually need to do. So I'm going to take this get square from point and in touch began here I'm just going to below our log here type self and get square from point and the point obviously is our touch location and now let's run the application again I'll just clear the console let's run the application and see what we get so we're starting up and now if I click at the top here you can see it says it's found tile on square 20 found a tile on square 14 found a tile on square 2 so it knows exactly where on the board we're actually selecting our tile. And remember this square here is irrelevant from which tile number we found because we simply need the square location from 0 to 24 so that we can then look if there's an empty square around it using our board occupants array as here. Okay then, so that's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.